Hello, this is Robert Smith here to tell you about utilizing symmetry in CFD models. Here you see a model of a shell and tube heat exchanger. I can see that the geometry can be evenly divided across one plane. I'm also comfortable with the assumption that flow is symmetric across this plane. In real life, there may be some flow through this plane, but I'm going to assume it's negligible. I think it's worth the savings I'll get from a reduced model size. For the sake of this video, I'll launch both a whole model and a divided one to compare them. Let's keep it simple. I'm only going to solve for internal flow, so all I need is the internal volume. I'll assign water to it. I'll assign zero pressure at my outlet and a volume flow rate of 1000 GPM at my inlet. I'll use a fine, uniform mesh on both models, specifying the same element size. I don't want the mesh to be a major factor in this comparison. I'll clone the design and launch an updated version that's only half the fluid domain. I must change a couple of things on the half model. First, I need to cut my volume flow rate in half. This wouldn't be a concern if I used velocity or pressure at my inlet, but if I left my flow rate at 1000 GPM, I'd effectively double the flow through my domain. Second, I need to apply the slip symmetry boundary condition to my symmetry plane. Unless I specify otherwise, CFD will treat every surface as a wall, assuming zero velocity there. We don't want that. In the full model, the fluid on that surface will be slipping against fluid, not shearing against a wall. The slip symmetry boundary condition is how we tell CFD that this isn't a wall, and that we don't want friction there. That's all. Let's run them and see the difference. Here you see a cross section showing velocity through the domains of both models. They look similar. As for the hard numbers, my pressure drops for both models are within 7% of each other. That's pretty close. I may even be able to get them closer if I gave these models a little more love. Note the time savings though. Using about half the elements in half the time, I'm able to get results that are effectively the same. I use this as much as possible for that reason. And it doesn't have to be just one half. If the model is appropriate, I might get away with modeling a quarter or eighth. In the case of parts that exhibit a revolved pattern about an axis, I may only model one or two instances of this pattern. Just remember to apply slip symmetry on any fluid surface that touches the cutting planes.